On Wednesday, China announced a new round of tariffs in the retaliation fight for tariffs that the Trump administration has slapped on Chinese goods entering the U.S. What's the impact of this latest escalation in the trade war between the United States and China? And will the president pay a political price for this negative impact that the tariff battle has placed on some of his most ardent supporters? We'll talk about that and more with Bob Livingston, former Republican member of Congress from Louisiana, a state that will be heavily hit by China's tariffs. He's in New Orleans. And in Washington, Chris Liu, he served as White House Cabinet Secretary and Deputy Secretary of Labor during the Obama administration. He's now a senior fellow at the Virginia Miller Center. Start with you, Bob, on China announced plans, 25% tariffs on U.S. products affecting agriculture, oil, and gas. It's going to have a huge negative effect on your state. What do you make of this, Bob? Well, I'm hoping it's going to be short-term, Larry. I, we can't really tell. Uh, we won't know for another uh, couple of months. But uh, Trump's uh, goal has been reciprocity. He wants the Chinese to treat us like we've been treating the Chinese. The problem is, in the last many years, we've been easy on their trade, but they've been pretty tough on ours, and they won't allow our stuff in, and, uh, or at least they put high tariffs on it. And uh, so I think his concern is, is absolutely on target. Uh, implementation of any trade uh, exchange, wars or otherwise, uh, is, is tenuous. Uh, I personally like most of the Trump uh, uh, accomplishments over these last uh, two years, uh, and, and this is the one question mark I have. But I have to tell you, I think reciprocity is the right goal. I think that uh, the president is absolutely on target. They've been stealing our information from people who are hacking our systems. Uh, they've been uh, uh, relying on us to not be tough on their trade while they have been tough on ours. And so the goal of having them treat us just like we treat them and vice versa is probably exactly right. Chris, would you argue that? Hasn't the system been unfair? Oh, absolutely. You know, we have legitimate complaints with China, not only in terms of intellectual property theft, in terms of currency manipulation, but this isn't the way to go. And if you're going to engage in a trade battle with China, you'd rather do it with your European allies, with Canada and Mexico on your side. We are fighting a trade war on all fronts right now, and that's going to have ramifications not only for businesses, but workers and farmers and consumers. Let's not forget, tariffs are a tax. Uh, and they're going to make Chinese goods more expensive, and they're going to make Chinese raw materials that go into U.S. manufactured products more expensive. Uh, we saw this week, for instance, uh, a company uh, that makes TVs in South Carolina that relies on Chinese parts saying they're going to have to lay off about 100 employees uh, because the components are too expensive. So, uh, yes, we are right to get tough with China, but I don't see an end game right now. And I think as this continues to spiral out without a strategy, uh, that could be very troubling for the U.S. economy. Bob, soybean, which is Louisiana's top export to China at about 5.6 billion, farmed on nearly 1 million acres in your state, already hit with heavy tariffs earlier this year. Can your state afford this? Well, I'm no farmer, and I, I can't be uh, claim I can't claim to be an expert on soybeans, other than to say that I am told that there are other markets uh, that we can sell to the Brazilians, we can sell to uh, uh, others who uh, consume soybeans, and that the, their markets can be offset by any loss in the Ch uh, in the Chinese front. But again, I'd, I'd have to say that look. If this is a short-term deal, it'll be a blip on the screen. Uh, people have counted Trump out innumerable times in other areas. And you can't argue with his goal of reciprocity. So uh, if he's, he and Secretary Ross and, and Lighthizer and the other people who are experts in this uh, trade arena are right, this whole thing will be over in a couple of months and we'll forget about it. But in the meantime, there's going to be some short-term uh, tightening of the belts. Chris, is reciprocity a bad idea? 
No, reciprocity is a good idea, but you need to have a strategy when you engage in these trade battles. And unfortunately, the innocent bystander in all of this is U.S. workers who are going to lose their jobs or U.S. farmers who are going to lose access to critical markets. The problem is, is that the U.S. Uh, agriculture industry has tried for years to get more access into the China market. It's a huge market for something like soybeans. And so if this continues to drag on, China will find uh, other places to purchase their soybeans from uh, for. And as uh, farmers are beginning to harvest their crops later on this year, uh, they're going to be faced with problems as to where to sell their products. And so, yes, I, you know, I agree with the congressman. We don't know what the long-term impact on this is. And I would certainly feel better if I had a sense that there was a strategy here. It feels like a game of one-upsmanship right now. And mind you, this is a president who said that trade wars are easy to win, and they're not easy to win. And it's one of the reasons why there is so much bipartisan concern in Congress about the direction that this is taking. Bob, China doesn't have to worry about political fallout, but Trump has to seek re-election, and he's got midterms. So what's the incentive to acquiesce to America's demands that China doesn't have, China could say, screw you? Well, they could, except for the fact that they've got uh, two and a half billion people uh, there who are consumers and uh, who are going to pay more uh, for American products or their own products. Plus, they have about twice as much debt uh, that they're covering uh, on their economy than we do, relatively speaking. And uh, I'm told, uh, well, if you watch Gordon Chang, who I think is one of the premier experts on the Chinese economy, yeah, we've had he him indicates uh, th that uh, the Chinese economy is very fragile and they can only take so much pain for so, so much period of time. We are thriving. Uh, we, we've got the lowest unemployment, the, the best economy that we've had in 15 years. And uh, I think that... If we have to, economically, we can hold out. What you said about the political situation is another story altogether, and we'll only know what happens in November. Chris, in a piece in Politico, the economist Megan Green suggests that Donald Trump has already hit his high watermark on the economy and will probably face a significant slowdown in the next couple of years. you agree with that? I, I do agree with that, and I think it's simply where we are in this economic cycle right now. This recovery has now gone on for eight or nine years, going back to 2010 during the Obama administration. It's just a simple matter of, of where we are uh, as cycles go. Uh, you also see, for instance, the GDP numbers that came out last week. There, there were great numbers, 4.1%, but they were artificially juiced by the tax cuts uh, as well as by a government uh, spending bill earlier this year. I think most economists think for overall for the year, we're probably looking at around 2.5% growth. Uh, and I think we are starting to face these headwinds. Uh, again, if this trade war goes on, uh, it could start to drag down consumer spending. It could start to drag down manufacturing as well. We don't know, uh, but simply based on the life cycle of uh, recoveries, we're probably heading towards the end of this one. Bob, the races in Kansas and, and uh, Ohio were so close. In fact, there's going to be another election in November in Ohio. Do you think it was a victory for Mr. Trump on Tuesday, or was it too close to call? Well, I'll tell you what, if those guys had lost, they would certainly be trumpeting the, the great losses. They didn't lose. Uh, there may be some absentee ballots to be counted, but right now it looks like Trump got five for five. That's a pretty good record, and I'll take it any way I can get it. Uh, I have to say that uh, our candidate in Ohio uh, has made mistakes, and I'm hoping that he rectifies them. Uh, because uh, I think he might have caused some of his own problems. But he was about 20 points behind before Donald Trump went in there for him this last weekend, and he won by about 1,700 votes. Uh, that's a remarkable turnaround. And if Trump can keep doing that, and he said he's going to go out and campaign for candidates, I think the Republicans are going to do okay this year. Chris, uh, Trump said he's willing to shut down the government if he doesn't get a spending bill that includes the wall. You think he's serious? Oh, I think he is serious. I, I don't think the Senate or the uh, House leaders are uh, necessarily backing him on that. And you started to see Trump back away from that threat last week. Uh, I think it would be sort of ironic to shut down the government when you control both houses. Uh, and I think they, you know, I think you do that you're at your own peril if you do that going into a midterm election uh, that is already facing uh, significant headwinds, uh, just given the Democratic enthusiasm right now. 
Bob Mitch Landrieu, the former mayor of New Orleans, is weighing away, says he's weighing a run for the 2020 Democratic presidential nomination. I'm sure you know him. What do you make of that idea? Oh, I know Mitch. I've known him most of my life. He's a nice guy. His sister was a United States senator. His dad was uh, uh, both mayor and secretary of HUD uh, under Jimmy Carter. Uh, Landrieu family is an old sign line political family here in this uh, city. Uh, but I don't think he could get elected statewide, and I really don't think he can get elected uh, nationwide. So I, don't, I wouldn't put a lot of money on his chances. Now for both of you, what's going to happen in the midterms? Chris, what's your thinking? Well, I think what we saw yesterday was incredible Democratic enthusiasm. Uh, I would disagree with a congressman about how to read the uh, Ohio 12 results. This was a district that Donald Trump won by 11 points, that the incumbent who had resigned had won by 36 points. Uh, and what you've seen today is a lot of the political prognosticators moving a significant number of House seats into the toss-up category. Uh, I think barring something unusual, uh, Democrats will t take back the House. Uh, they'll probably hold their own in the Senate, uh, plus or minus a seat or so. Bob, how do you see it? Well, I think we're going to pick up seats in the Senate, and I, I don't put any money on this blue wave. If anything, it's a blue trickle. Uh, and uh, it's going to be close no matter how you cut it. The Republicans, if they hold the House, will do it by a very narrow majority. And the Democrats, uh, if they take the House, will do it by a very narrow majority. Uh, look, there's no substitute for having an excellent candidate. In my opinion, in the, in the House uh, uh, race in Ohio, I, I don't, I'm not so sure that that was the case. Our candidate needs to do a better job. If he does, uh, he can still hold on. In all of those other races, frankly, I think that uh, it depends on the quality of the candidate. Uh, but I wouldn't uh, count too much uh, on, on uh, the big Democrat wave. Look, Democrats are sorely divided. All of Bernie Sanders' uh, candidates and uh, that lady Ocasio, whatever her name is, uh, from New York, uh, campaigned for, all of them lost with the exception of one. Uh, and if you look at the rest of the races around the country, if, you, if they have extreme leftist candidates, they're not going to win. They are flat out not going to win, except in the most unusual districts. Uh, if they have strong mainstream candidates on the Democrat side, yeah, they'll, they'll pose a, a significant threat. But again, uh, the Republicans need to have top quality candidates as well. And I've met a lot of them, and I'm very, very impressed with the quality of, that they're putting up now. Bob and Chris, thanks so much for your time today. Great talking with both of you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank guys. you, Larry. Good to be with you.